going on guys D1 here and today I bring to you the long-awaited health bar tutorial a lot of people have requested this so I'm gonna make it right now uh, I've actually made this before I'm actually doing a second run as we speak uh, because the first time I felt like I explained a bit too much it was like 40 minutes or maybe a little bit more than that uh, just to make a simple health bar uh, so I felt that was a bit excessive, so I decided to redo it so that it's short and to the point. So let me explain to you guys what I learned uh, for HP. What I learned back in the day when the game engine was still young and most people were inexperienced in it. Uh, you always had a health of 100. Uh, if you increase it, you make it more than that, it's at your own peril. You would actually have a better time making your health 10 than 100. And the reason for that is because the way the animation worked, the display of making the bar shrink or increase, uh, was basically, you, you would, you would, let's say you lost one health. You had 100 health, you lost one health, so you moved from 100 to 99. Well, you would have to make the logic bricks for that minor change. And you would have to make the logic bricks to play the animation. Uh, for each health bar that would be decreased. So I would have to set up the logic bricks to play the animation from 100 to 99, and then from 99 to 98, and then from 98 to 97, all the way down to zero. Which was a complete pain, obviously, uh, because you would have over 100 logic bricks on each side to set up your health. There's obviously going to be increasing your health, you know, for healing and whatnot. So that's even like twice, it's like 200 over 200. So I came up with a system here that is simple and that's also flexible because what I had in mind is some people will want to have their maximum health be 100 because why not? That's a simple, uh, easy variable. Well, but what about RPGs or any kind of game where you can upgrade your health? You can wear better armor and that increases your maximum health. Or you you know just upgrade your character in general uh, to give him a health boost. In that case, you'll want to have a flexible system where the health can change, the maximum health can change, without affecting, uh, w while the system would still work, regardless of what the health becomes. So I'm going to show you guys what it's going to look like. I'm going to go to Blender Game. First thing we're going to need, of course, is an actual health bar with an animation. So I'll just make that quick. I'm going to add a plane. Uh, so Y axis, X axis. Actually, let's do it this way. Uh, this is the X axis. And what I'll do is I'll just hit S, X, 5. So that's going to scale the X axis and it's going to multiply it by 5 on the X axis. And this is just going to be our background plane. Uh, we could set it to black. It's just going to be the border or the background. And then we're going to add a second plane. And this will actually be the health bar. So I'm going to pull it up because it's colliding with the bottom plane and that's causing a glitch. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, SY, scale it down a bit so we can see the top there and the bottom so that it looks like a border and then hit SX to scale it almost all the way out so that we can still see the background but it's almost to the scale, it's a bit smaller than the background plane and we're just gonna give it a color of red because that's what I want my health bar to be. So now we have our health bar. One thing though, to animate it, we want to scale it down so that we make it shrink, move from the right all the way to the left. To do that, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to hit GX. You can see the center there, the object's center, uh, or the origin, the object's origin as it's called, is at the center at this point. So if I scale on the X axis, it's going to shrink both the right and the left side uh, towards the center or away from it. So I'm going to move it so that the left side is touching the center. And what that's going to do is if I go back to object mode by hitting tab and hit SX, it's going to scale it in the way we want so we can animate it easily now. Okay, so we're going to move it back roughly into position. Now the origin is at the left and now we can scale it down to create our animation. We're just going to go into the animation uh, layout for it to be easier. We're going to switch. You can see here there's a drop sheet at the top here on the uh, drop sheet section. This is curves, I think, or something. Graphic editor. We don't want to worry about the graphic editor, just the drop sheet, the dots here. We're going to change it to action. And then what we'll do is we're going to go to frame uh, 
So the starting frame is going to be frame 0, which is when the health is 0. The ending frame is going to be 1000. That's because I'm going to assume that by default the health is, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever the health value is, convert it to a percent out of 100 obviously, and then apply the animation to it as is appropriate because we want to have a uniform uh, number to deal with. Now if I just set the animation to be from 0 to 100, then the transition from one health point to another is not going to be that smooth. To make it smoother we need more frames, so I'm just going to multiply 100 by 10 to get 1000. So our ending frame is going to be 1000. I'm just going to make sure that I'm at 1000. It's going to indicate here that you're at frame 1000. Over here it's going to say that you're at frame 1000. So I'm going to go to frame 1000. While selecting the plane, I'll hit I, Scale. And what that's going to do is it's going to add a frame uh, that memorizes the scale of the plane as it is. Now we're just going to go back to 0. So 1000 is going to be when the health is completely maximized as it is over here in the 3D preview. Going back to zero now, I'm going to go ahead and scale the plane all the way down to the point where it's pretty much invisible. I'm going to keep scaling on the x-axis, and I think this is fine. I'm going to hit I, scale. So now we have the transition from the plane being uh, at zero, which is zero health, and pretty much invisible, to being maximum health, which is a thousand. Now we have our animation. You can see it gave it a name here, plane dot whatever. Action. I'm just going to call it health bar animation. And you want to memorize the name with capitalization, whatnot, because we'll need that in our animation script. Now I'm going to switch back to game logic. So while I do the logic, I'll just be selecting this red plane. I'm going to call it health bar plane for convenience. I'm going to call it health bar, and I'm only going to be applying. Uh, logic and properties to this. As a matter of fact, uh, this black background border plane is just going to be set to no collision because we don't need it. And of course in a game you would take these two and you would uh, move them towards your camera and parent them to the, to the camera and whatnot. I'm not going to do that. We just want to see the health bar move. That's the, what I'm teaching you here. Uh, how to make it actually work, the functionality. So we have our red plane selected, the actual health bar. Uh, we'll need five properties for it. Now what's going what, to what's going to happen is we're going to need three uh, uh, three types of properties. The first one is going to be the original health, uh, which is going to be the health as it is. So whatever its its value is going to be, two thousand, three thousand, uh, a hundred, whatever you're going to set your maximum health to be, that's going to be the first set of properties. The second set is going to be the percent version. We're going to take whatever value it is, 2,350, and we're going to convert that to a value out of 100, to an integer uh, out of 100, so that it becomes a percent. Uh, that keeps it simple and it keeps it neat. Once we convert it to a percent, then we're going to multiply that percent value by 100 so that we scale it up to fit into our animation. Because, of course, the maximum value for a percent is 100. We want the maximum value to be 1,000 so that it fits into our animation, uh, which is obviously from 0 to 1,000. That's why we multiply the percent by 10. So these are the three steps. Then the rest is just going to be the animation. I'm going to show you guys how that works. We'll need five properties. The first one is going to be max HP. And this property, all of them are going to be integers, so we'll just do that right now. Uh, the max HP, we're going to need the maximum HP to uh, calculate the percent, uh, to, get, to, to get a percent value for the HP. And what maximum HP is going to represent is obviously the player at full health. So let's say you, the game starts off and the player has 1,000 health. By the end of the game has 3,000 health as his maximum health. Well, that's what the maximum health is going to represent, how much healing can be... Uh, can be done and how much damage can be taken. So I'm going to set this to a random number of 2,951. That's the maximum health. Now by default the player is going to start with full health. The second property is going to be the actual HP. And of course everything is integer and it's going to be the same value as the maximum HP because we want the player to start off with maximum HP. You could set it to less if you want it to start with half HP whatever. I'm just going to set it to the uh, to the maximum HP. The third one is going to be a ghost HP property. So I'm going to call it ghost HP. 
and it's going to be starting it, it starts off as the same value that the HP is at right so if you set